Video starts right now. I'm ABC's Justin Finch in Washington following the latest round of flight delays and cancellations impacting airports nationwide and with what one travel association is urging Congress to do to make air travel more efficient. That story ahead. What do you know? What do you say this morning? 77 degrees out there. So again, not much of a cool down in the overnight hours as we look forward to just getting out of the month of June alive. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday. It is June <laughs> 28th, uh, closer to July. Again, uh, we can, yeah. every day we get through is a little bit closer to hopefully a chance of a rain event or something like that. Yes, we hope so. I think we have an advantage in the morning that we get to step out before yeah. the sun's out. Right. So it's not as... You know, dramatic. A, a key advantage. We call yes. it vampire syndrome. Mike Osterhage is here <laughs> okay. with more on that. However, got a question for you. Mm -hmm. it, it was just a little more tolerable this morning. This morning, stepping yes. Stepping outside. I thought yeah. you were going to say yesterday. I was like, no, no, no. Well, I mean, we at least get the humidity <laughs> dropping in the afternoon. It was still 104 yesterday. But yeah, this morning, it's just a little bit better. So that's kind of a hint of things to come. We do have some of our morning clouds that are showing up as of right now. Temperature 77, mid 70s pretty much across the board. These numbers are actually down a couple of notches compared to yesterday. It doesn't seem like, I mean, you know, one or two degrees doesn't seem like a lot, but it's just that much more tolerable and you can kind of, um, Get a little deeper breath, if you will, when you step outside. And as far as the uh, heat index, 82 is what it feels like in Castroville. Not that much above the actual air temperatures out there. So you just get that little bit lower humidity. And again, it does make a fairly decent uh, dent in the, the extreme heat and humidity. Mold is on the low side from yesterday's count. And uh, it is a yellow day for CPS Energy. You can scan that QR code if you want to find out more about that. Also, heat advisories, once again, have been posted through this evening, but not the entire area. More and more counties are taken out of that. Now, it's still obviously going to be very hot. We will still have temperatures getting up to 102, but it's just shy of the actual criteria. So, you know, it, it's one degree here or there. Doesn't put it on the map or on the graphic, but obviously, like I said, still hot 102, but the humidity will be lower in the afternoon, so we won't just have those outrageously high heat index readings. And yes, we are looking at even lower temperatures going down the road in long range forecast and a chance for some rain. Yay, strike up the band. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Texas lawmakers will take another swing at property taxes. Governor Abbott has called the legislature back to Austin for a second special session. Our Sarah Costa is here to show us what's on the agenda this time. Well, good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Steph. Mark, taxes, taxes, taxes. Everyone's focused on those property taxes. And the first 30-day special session of 2023 ended quietly Tuesday with no laws made and the Texas House and Senate still deadlocked on the best approach to property tax cuts. So the Texas Tribune reports House lawmakers will return at 11 a.m. today. So the Texas House has been adjourned since May 30th. The House passed bills on property taxes and border security, then left. The Senate passed its own versions, but without the House in session, nothing made it to the governor's desk. So Governor Greg Abbott supports the House's property tax plan, which has put him at odds with Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick. The House version would send more money to school districts to lower those property taxes compared to the Senate version, which would focus more on the money set aside for property taxes on increasing the homestead exemption. Abbott says he will call additional special sessions on property taxes until a deal reaches his desk. So the governor also recently vetoed a number of bills from the regular session, citing the importance of passing legislation on property taxes first. Mark, Steph. Frustration again at this morning's uh, at the nation's airports. Travelers across the country are waking up to news of flight cancellations and thousands more delays. And as ABC's Justin Finch reports, even though these summer travel disruptions are largely being blamed on storms, one major airline is also pointing the finger at the FAA. Severe weather stalling summer travel across the U.S. It's not raining at home and it's not raining here, so I'm just confused why planes are not flying. Thunderstorm threats grounding flights in the Northeast with more than 2,000 cancellations and 7,000 delays yesterday alone. At New Jersey's Newark Airport, turmoil in the terminal. This man says he was transferred to a flight leaving next week. Now they're giving us a flight to 
for the second of July. I can't wait until July the second. I mean, yeah, it's like seven days, six days from now. It's yeah, ridiculous. A chain reaction felt all the way in Colorado at the Denver airport. It looks like an apocalypse. It really does. Everybody, you know, is just sprawled out on the floor. While the FAA is faulting the weather for air travel disruptions, United Airlines CEO Scott Kirby is blaming the agency itself for delays at its Newark hub, telling employees the FAA reduced the arrival rates by 40 percent and the departure rates by 75 percent. And calling weather something that the FAA has historically been able to manage. The FAA firing back, saying, we will always collaborate with anyone seriously willing to join us to solve a problem. The back and forth comes as the FAA struggles with staffing, especially for air traffic controllers. There's only so much they can do, though. They can't snap their fingers and create new air traffic controllers. It's just not that easy. With TSA expected to screen more than 2.8 million Americans alone Friday, the U.S. Travel Association is pressing Congress to quickly finalize funding for the FAA to hire more staff and to make the nation's air travel system more efficient and secure. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Supreme Court has rejected a controversial election law theory backed by supporters of former President Donald Trump. The issue stems from North Carolina's 2022 congressional map. The state Supreme Court invalidated the map and replaced it with court-drawn maps that favored Democrats. North Carolina Republicans appealed the decision to the U.S. Supreme Court, arguing the state court exceeded its authority. They were asking the justices to adopt a long, dormant legal theory that state entities have a limited role in reviewing election rules established by state legislators when it comes to federal elections. In his opinion, Chief Justice John Roberts said that state courts have the authority to apply state constitutional restraints, but also said federal courts can supervise in certain circumstances. Big entertainment news this morning. The DC Extended Universe has a new Clark Kent and Lois Lane. DC Studios co-chair James Gunn officially shared his cast for the next DC blockbuster film called Superman Legacy. According to Warner Brothers Pictures, actors David Cornswet will don Superman's iconic red cape, while Rachel Brosnahan has been tapped to play Lois Lane. This will be Cornswet's first big casting in a major franchise. He takes over as Superman after Henry Cavill announced last year he would not be returning to play the character with Gunn at the helm of DC. Brosnahan is fresh off her role leading the Emmy-winning streaming series The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel for five seasons. Superman Legacy expected to launch a revamped DC Universe. It's slated to premiere in theaters July 11th, 2025. They look like the characters. They kind of do. Yeah. I think that was the idea, right? Yeah, it works. Yeah. <laughs> Time now, 438 and 76 degrees for now. A little low on cash. Up next, a uh, look at a uh, new series that shows how, how to get your hands on unclaimed money that actually belongs to you. And a quick look at the roads with trans guys. Looking over at I-10 at Crossroads, where things are moving early this morning. We can use some rain around here. I think everybody can agree on that. And we're going to look at our rain chances in the extended forecast right now. A really nice look at San Antonio International Airport with planes preparing to push from the gate and head to far-flung destinations away from San Antonio. Be right back. And welcome back. It's 441. Now to a new three-day series on how you can find unclaimed money that you may be owed. ABC's Will Reeve has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, get ready for our three-day event. How to get your hands on unclaimed money that actually belongs to you. I just got $20. Because it turns out so many people have unclaimed property. You may be in for a very pleasant surprise. That's right. At this moment, your state might have unclaimed money that you may be owed, cash you've forgotten about or maybe never knew existed, from things like old bank accounts, uncollected insurance policies, even tax returns that perhaps got lost in the mail. Across the nation, more than $20 billion just waiting to be reclaimed by its citizens simply by searching for your name on your state's website or on missingmoney.com. No matter how small or no matter how big, it's your property. And coming up at 7 a.m., we're kicking off our unclaimed money event in Massachusetts with everything you need to know to get the money you're owed. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, Needham, Massachusetts. 
442, 76 degrees. Heavy metals in baby food, well, it was recently a problem, but hasn't improved. Up next, we take a look at which foods are still a problem. 445, many of us strive to live a healthier lifestyle, but one local woman is not just living that life, but competing for the title of Muscle and Fitness, her magazine's Ms. Health and Fitness. Shannon Hernandez is currently a semifinalist to win the award and the cover of the magazine. So Hernandez tells us that she's always been motivated by the good competition, but what sold her on this specifically is that it's also a fundraiser for homes for wounded warriors. It's important to me to really show that fit and healthy looks different on everybody. Everybody is different. And so, you know, yeah, 45 year old uh, mom of two and uh, to really show that off. And now it says she is currently the healthiest she has ever been and she still gets to indulge in her favorite breakfast tacos, adding it's all about balance. Voting for her is free, but you can donate with each vote. So, so far she has raised a little less than $8,000 for Homes for Wounded Warriors. The next round of voting ends tomorrow at 9 p.m. Well, now to some tests on baby food. New tests, there's growing pressure to reduce the heavy metals in products that babies eat like metals uh, like lead and arsenic. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz on what parents need to know. Oh, wow, she did that herself. <laughs> Just what's in your baby's food. Let's back up. Five years ago, Consumer Reports tested 50 baby foods and found concerning levels of heavy metals in most. About two thirds were found to contain enough inorganic arsenic, lead, and cadmium combined to be associated with potential health. Consuming heavy metals long term can lead to a higher risk of a variety of health problems, including lower IQ, behavioral issues. They've been linked to ADHD and autism and increased cancer risk. Now, five years later, they retested seven baby foods that had the highest levels of heavy metals. In three of the foods, heavy metal levels declined. But for three others, they say the levels are still concerning. Back in 2018 and in our recent tests, baby food snacks like puffs and products made with sweet potatoes and rice fared the worst. That's because certain plants, like rice, absorb higher levels of heavy metals than other plants. Beech Nut, Gerber, Earth's Best, and Happy Family responded saying their products are safe and heavy metals are naturally occurring in the environment in which these foods are grown. The makers of baby mum mum foods did not respond. So what do you do? CR's experts suggest minimizing exposure. But they say you don't want to completely eliminate foods like sweet potatoes because these are nutritious. Instead, feed your children a variety of foods. Those with low levels of heavy metals include infant cereals from oats, fresh and frozen fruit, eggs, beans, applesauce, cheese, and yogurt. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. And looking out there with Trans Guy, looking over at I-10 at Crossroads, where things are just moving awesome at this hour of the morning. No accidents to report either. Nope. Just double checked with uh, the TechStop website. That's good news. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to take off early, you can get to your destination on time. Yeah. yeah. No, none of us. We have to stay here. We just got here. So oh, right. We right. cannot take off. Early. Sorry, Mike. I misunderstood. So, you know, got out of the car in the parking lot right here and was like, why? It, it's a little, you know, you can, mm -hmm. it's not a stifling this morning. I sure. Sure. Is that the AC from the fire station next door that you were feeling? <laughs> yeah, the doors of the station were open okay. right here. But no, um, yeah, it's slightly, and I'm just talking slight, but, um, you know, we'll take little tiny yes. steps here. So it's a place to be and having a pool party there. I wonder if any one of these jumped in there and doing a cannonball. Anyway, and, you know, and this afternoon, if you do happen to hop in a pool or pond um, and you get out, it is going to be a bit more refreshing when you hop out of it because we'll have some lower humidity in the afternoon. Got a few clouds around here right now. Uh, it's still very warm temperatures. We are three degrees above normal right now. Pretty much that's the, the average around the area. Dew points at 72 and 75 New Braunfels, 74 Castroville Canyon Lake. Those are the highest numbers on there, so we're not seeing those widespread 74 75s, which is that window dripping kind of humidity. We do have a slight bit of a heat index, but actually when you go back to dew points and I know this isn't a lot, but you know, down a degree to three degrees, that does make somewhat of a difference out there. And that will then continue to be the trend, at least for the next couple of days. Now we will go through the afternoon 
cycle where the humidity drops down. Don't know if it'll get this low. This computer is a little generous, but yesterday in the afternoon we did get down to about 61, which is very, very nice. I mean, think back to last week when we the those dew point temperatures measure moisture in the atmosphere is what we're talking about. Stayed up in the 74, 75, 76 degree range. So yes, this will be much easier to, to kind of tolerate in the afternoon, and that'll be the situation again tomorrow. Humidity will come up in, in the mornings and then drop down in the afternoons. So we are going to drop down to 76 this morning and then warm up pretty quickly. Of course, we are going to be up into the <clears throat> excuse me. Low to mid 90s already by noon and then 102. Now, the heat, again, there will be somewhat of a heat index out there, but not as extreme. We haven't really hit the uh, won't hit the criteria for the heat advisories. That's why it's not posted here in town and primarily just down to the southeast. Still, it's going to be hot, obviously, but we're shaving off a couple of degrees here and there. Here's the water vapor imagery. Still got that big clockwise rotation. However, the center of that is now starting to shift off to the east a little bit more. So that's going to continue to be the case as we go into the next couple of days and then go into the latter part of the weekend, first part of next week. And that's why then, yep, got a couple of cloud graphics on there. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Haven't put the little raindrops on there yet, but 10% chance for a stray shower primarily out to the west, uh, maybe late Sunday, 20% Monday, Tuesday. So, which means it's only going to be kind of a handful, but at least there's going to be a few of them. 97s for high temperatures on Monday and Tuesday. It's so funny. That's the hottest average temperature in the first couple of weeks of August, the hottest time of the year. Mm. That sounds cold almost compared to where we've been, you know? That true. is true, but yeah. at least it's a little break in the 4th of July. Yep, and, and again, today we had a little yesterday, slightly lower humidity in the afternoons too, so a bit more tolerable. Hopefully, you know, the air conditioners don't work quite as hard in the afternoon, so. Yes, we'll take it. Thanks, Mike. Time right now, 452, 76 degrees. An iconic Star Wars outfit could be yours if you have a little bit of cash lying around. Oh, I love that. Up next, we're going to tell you how much you'll have to pay to own a piece of a galaxy far, far away. But first, your lottery numbers. Pick 3, 6, 2, 8, Fireball 6, Daily 4, 9, 2, 7, 2, Fireball 2. Cash 5, 3, 17, 25, 28, 34. Andrew Mega Millions, 8, 34, 35, 41, 52, Mega Ball 12, Mega Plier 4. Good luck. Wheel of Fortune gets its new host, plus why singer Louis Capaldi is taking a break from touring. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Seacrest in. Syndicated radio host and host of American Idol, Ryan Seacrest, has found his next gig. He's going to be the host of Wheel of Fortune. In a statement, he says he's truly humbled to be stepping into the footsteps of the legendary Pat Sajak and says he can't wait to work alongside the great Vanna White. The first we've heard that she'll be staying when Sajak leaves, which is supposed to happen after this upcoming season. Singer Louis Capaldi taking a break from touring after Sunday's Glastonbury performance where he was visibly having trouble caused by his Tourette syndrome, which he was diagnosed with less than a year ago. Capaldi says on Instagram he needs to take a break to focus on his health. If you have deep pockets, an iconic Star Wars outfit could be yours. The white dress Carrie Fisher wears as Princess Leia at the end of the first film is up for auction starting today by Prop Store, and they estimate it'll go for between $1 to $2 million. They say it's the only Princess Leia costume known to still exist from the original film. And earlier this week, we found out Mel Brooks was getting an honorary Oscar, and today is his birthday. The comedy legend is 97. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. The producer of this news cast, Hardy's a mega Star Wars fan. He yes. said um, that he would consider uh, an auction bid. Right, but yeah. you prefer a, a, light a lightsaber. Saber. Yeah, yeah. I, I prefer the gown. That's probably my favorite outfit on her yep. for the whole series. It is iconic there for the end of the very first film. That's the uh, that's the Darth Vader theme, buddy. I know. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> we went to the dark side for a moment. 456, 76 degrees. Former President Trump says he has no regrets about how he handled classified documents after leaving the White House. Up next on GMSA, how how the Trump administration is reacting to newly released audio footage. As the 100 degree temperatures continue, ERCOT could set a new record for demand today. We'll take a look at their forecast and little things you can do to help reduce the strain on the grid. 
And a quick check of the roads with, supposed to be with Transsky. Coffee is up. Is that coffee? Coffee up, commuters. Is this, <laughs> is this a message for me? Yes. Uh, we'll, we'll take it. But it's we're gonna, a commuter cappuccino. <laughs> we'll, we'll check in with Stephen Cavazos very soon. Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. A rollover crash traps a driver inside his vehicle overnight. Just ahead, how he was rescued and his condition this morning. And trouble continues for former President Trump. Up next, why the former president insists that there is no wrongdoing in his handling of sensitive government documents after he left the White House. Well, good news, we dropped one degree uh, just in the last half hour or so. We'll talk to Mike Osterhage in a moment. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday. June 28th. Yay, we made it to Wednesday. And yes, you're right, it went down in degree. And I think this is, a, well, I don't want to say a lot cooler, but it's better than it was yesterday morning. So that's encouraging. Fair enough. Mike Osterhage, good morning. Good morning. Yeah. And it was, you know, even though we did hit 104 yesterday, it was slightly more tolerable in the afternoon because the humidity was that much lower in the afternoon. That's going to be the case again today. And we'll get into that trend where we go through our, our cycle where it's lower in the afternoons. Uh, 77 degrees, two points at 72. So yeah, that number, that bottom number is down a couple of notches uh, compared to this time yesterday. And we have a heat index of 78. We will make it up to 102 later on today, not 104 like the past couple of days and slightly less humid in the afternoon. The aquifer, of course, has been taking huge, huge hit yesterday, 1.9 feet going down. Anything that we benefited from from the rain earlier in the spring, it's all been wiped out. Unfortunately, mold is on the low side. Got a little bit of a heat index, but I mean, even to compare to yesterday morning, these numbers are down slightly a couple of degrees, so it's not quite as humid and we're you know, just little little tiny steps here and there, but we take anything we can get the uh, high, which has been sitting on top of us, kind of plaguing us, if you will. Still, it's right here, but the center of it has started to shift off to the east a bit more. And so that's why it's starting to, to ease its grip on top of us. Um, one example, heat advisories don't just cover the entire area. Hill Country and even Bear County has been taken out of this. Still, obviously, it's going to be hot. You want to be careful out there, but the formal heat advisories are posted just down to the southeast. It's just a, you know, it's an arbitrary number. If you hit that, get a heat advisory. So just obviously you still want to take it easy outside. Slightly more pleasant this morning. 102, lower humidity in the afternoon. So we're not going to have those outrageously high heat index readings later on this afternoon. Going through tomorrow through Saturday then, 100 for high temperature. So we shave off a couple of degrees, lower afternoon humidity. Then we get into next week, upper 90s, and we are going to see at least a shower or two around the area. So we're starting to see the pattern shift a little bit, which is fantastic news. Details, and we'll take a look at those rain chances coming up in just a couple of, I can't believe I used the word rain, the phrase rain chances. That's <laughs> wonderful. Uh, traffic authority. <laughs> Steven, oh. see, I, I'm all, all you know, I was, fuddled by rain chances. I here. was thinking about you yesterday, Mike, as I was sitting outside. I was like, man, I'm looking forward to those rain chances. But uh, you know what? I know a lot of drivers have a lot to look forward to this morning. Quiet roads. That's how we're starting our morning. 410 at Broadway. You can see right behind me, there's really not a lot to show you. Just a lot of pavement and maybe a few folks out there getting the morning started early with us. There's 35 north at Loop 410. A lot of overnight construction. That will for right now be the main headline of the roadways. You take it to our map, you see a lot of it scattered in and around the Alamo City, and a lot of that's actually going to be taking place outside Loop 1604. More on that a little bit later on, but if your travels are taking you into San Antonio, you're in good shape here. Pretty green from Seguin along I-10 westbound, 35 minutes to the Alamo City. 33 along 87 northbound if you're traveling in from Lavernia this early, and for our friends down in Floresville, should be about a 29-minute commute. So again, quiet start to our morning over here in the traffic lab, and for a lot of drivers out there, it's a good start to their morning. We'll continue to watch roads closely, and again, I'll have an update on those road closures to be on the lookout for a little bit later on in the newscast. Mark. New this morning, a driver badly hurt following a crash on San Antonio's northwest side overnight. Happened around 1.30 a.m. in the 9100 block of Loop 1604 West, not far from Halotis. Police say the driver lost control of his SUV on an exit ramp to Bandera Road. The driver rolled the vehicle several times and was trapped inside until he was rescued by firefighters. He was taken to a hospital in critical condition. 
Like Smart Mike's forecast has indicated another week of scorching triple digit temperatures and ERCOT continues its weather watch through Friday. Our Sarah Costa joins us live in the studio to show us the latest numbers from ERCOT's power grid. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Steph. Mark, you know, unfortunately, we've gotten used to this song and dance and ERCOT could set a new record for demand today. Forecast shows it could hit 82,197 megawatts. So the weather watch issued last week said the record was 80,148 megawatts set last year in July. However, yesterday we definitely topped that at 450 p.m. at 81,017 megawatts. And ERCOT Weather Watch is an advanced notification of forecasting significant weather with high demand. So grid conditions are expected to be normal today, but due to forecasted conditions, operating reserves may be lower. You can do your part by planning ahead and reducing your energy during higher demand periods. And like Mike said earlier, 30 CPS Energy has flagged today as a yellow day, which encourages energy conservation between 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. So CPS Energy says that means customers should raise their thermostats if safe to do so, charge electric vehicles at night, and avoid using large appliances such as washers, dryers, and ovens during times of peak energy demand. Mark, Steph. Well, several people are without a place to stay this morning after a massive apartment fire in Leon Valley. It happened at the Vista Del Rey Apartments around 530 yesterday. Here's video from that scene. Fire officials say it started on the lower level, but quickly spread to the rest of the building. In total, 12 units caught fire and the entire building was a total loss. Nobody was hurt and the Red Cross is helping everyone affected by this fire. This morning, there is a new effort to crack down on a crime happening all over San Antonio, illegal dumping. City crews picked up nearly 2,400 tons of illegally dumped trash and waste last year. So this is home security video of illegal dumping in the Copper Branch neighborhood. Residents tell us that they've seen couches, bedroom sets, basketball goals, and appliances dumped behind their homes. It is issues like these that have solid waste management and the police teaming up to catch people responsible. Extremely excited because this is exactly what we wanted. We needed to catch someone. We needed to publicize that we did, that we are doing this. We needed to reconfirm with everyone there are consequences. Solid Waste Management recommends people call 311 so reports on certain locations start to add up. That way they can continue identifying problem spots. Former President Donald Trump is now offering a new explanation for a new audio recording. It is where he's heard talking about a potential plan to attack Iran. And as ABC's Justin Finch reports, some experts say the audio tape only adds to the former president's legal troubles. This morning, former President Trump offering a new explanation for that audio recording quoted in the indictment related to his handling of classified documents. Trump telling ABC's Rachel Scott, if you want to know the truth, it was bravado. I was talking and just holding up papers and talking about them, but I had no documents. He continued to insist throughout the duration of our interview with him that he did nothing wrong. He maintains the fact that he wasn't actually showing classified documents, but you heard the recording for yourself. Trump spoke to Rachel after ABC News aired the recording from a meeting at Trump's New Jersey Golf Club in 2021, in which Trump described a document he says was compiled by former Trump Joint Chiefs Chairman General Mark Milley outlining a potential attack on Iran. I just found, isn't that amazing? This totally wins my case, you know. Mm -hmm. Except it is like highly confidential yeah. secret. <laughs> Trump has pleaded not guilty to 37 federal charges in relation to documents found at his Mar-a-Lago resort in Florida. Now, the New York Times reports prosecutors have also subpoenaed surveillance video from Trump's New Jersey golf club as part of the investigation. In the meantime, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy on damage control after suggesting Trump may not be the strongest Republican candidate in the 2024 presidential race. Can he win that election? Yeah, he can. You think he can? You... The, the question is, is he the strongest to win the election? I don't know that answer. After that interview, a source says McCarthy called Trump directly to further explain that comment. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. 509, 76 degrees. And just ahead on GMSA, how Meta is making it easier for parents to control what their kids see on Facebook and Instagram. And we're getting excited about some July 4th fun after the break where you can celebrate here in the Alamo City. 
and looking out there with a live cam. We are thankful that it's a few degrees cooler, if you will, this morning. And things may look pretty good at the end of the week as well. We're going to be checking in with Mike very soon. Just about 513. Hard to believe, but the 4th of July is less than a week away and people are already getting ready to celebrate. Here's KSET intern Allison Hill with a preview. Fourth of July fireworks will return to San Antonio next week after many shows were canceled last year due to the drought. Preparations for the holiday are now underway. Several parks and neighborhoods have planned celebrations, including parades, food, live music, and fireworks. San Antonio's big celebration at Woodlawn Lake will also return this year, kicking off at 11 Tuesday morning. And you can find the full list of locations of events on our website. Just head to ksat.com. For GMSA, I'm Allison Hill. So that's Allison, and eventually you're probably going to meet Allie, Allie. Allie yes. our other intern, yes. too. We have them here this summer. Nice, to, nice job there. 513, 76 degrees. And just ahead, we're going to tell you when a popular podcasting app is shutting down. And we'll show you this new, very tiny mini action camera from Insta360. And now to help you catch your moments, your smart, smartphone cannot. and savings, just like bundling your home and car with Geico. Yeah, in fact, hot nuts are like home insurance. I get it. The Gecko explained it pretty clearly. Whoa! Hey, I know you. Yeah, hi. Not you. The guy who helped me bundle my home and car, he's great. Thanks, mate. I appreciate it. Probably thought you were somebody else. <laughs> okay. See how much you could save by bundling with Geico. One Prilosec OTC each morning blocks heartburn all day and all night. Prilosec OTC reduces excess acid for 24 hours, blocking heartburn before it starts. One pill a day, 24 hours, zero heartburn. Bug spray works best when your family actually wears it. Get odor-free eight-hour protection from mosquitoes and ticks without the ick. Zevo on body repellent. People love it. Bugs hate it. Meta is rolling out new parental control tools for Instagram and Facebook. ABC's Morgan Norwood has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Instagram and Facebook Messenger now have more parental control tools. They'll allow parents to supervise their teens on the apps, letting them see how much time their kid spends on Messenger and who they're interacting with. But parents cannot see the messages their kids are sending. The podcasting app Stitcher is on its way out. Parent company SiriusXM says the popular web service is shutting down at the end of August. But Stitcher's premium content may be moving elsewhere, and that's part of a strategy to push users to the broader SiriusXM platform. And finally, a really tiny camera has hit the market. The Insta360 Go 3 comes with a hat clip and a pendant mount, so you can take it just about anywhere. The case includes a flip screen for a live view of what you're recording. The price tag, not so tiny though, $380. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. It's like a GoPro, right? Uh, almost like a police body cam for civilians. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I would say so. But yeah, you could use your phone for that. I mean, just yeah. grab a little just, yeah, case just a little set of that. Get yeah. something, stick it right there, and you're all set. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Put it on your forehead. So. <laughs> there you go. A little, have little you, heavy. Have you ever for seen that. the cat cams where they put the cameras on the cat's collar? And oh, how cute! I know. One day, I just kind of fell down the YouTube rabbit hole and just started watching cat <laughs> videos, and somehow stumbled upon cat cams. I'm gonna have to yeah. look it up. Yeah, I, I will, can't imagine I'll, cats would like that too well. Oh, I'm sure they don't. Well, I mean, there's like 30 minutes of footage there, let me tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, our cameras on TransGuide aren't really capturing a whole lot out there, folks. We have a pretty good start to our morning. You can see there at 281 at San Pedro and even there at 281 at St. Mary's. Great time to hit the roads if you're an early bird like us here on GMSA. Nothing should slow you down, but be on the lookout. Of course, what you see at this hour is going to be a lot of the active construction taking place in and around the Alamo City. I mentioned this a little bit earlier. We do have a lot of that work taking place outside Loop 1604. Right here, I-10 in Guadalupe County, we will see paving work take place. This has been current for quite a while, but I want you to keep this on your radar if you travel through these hours uh, as 8 p.m. to 6 in the morning. This work will wrap up on Friday, June 30th, but uh, in the meantime, we'll see a single westbound main lane closure from Zoll Road to Zoll 
Road, pardon me, to FM 2538. But it's just one of the many construction spots that is happening right now in and around the Alamo City. So head over to ksat.com slash traffic for a full list of all the closures that are happening. But back here, not seeing anything uh, too bad on the Transguide cameras yet, Mike. Knew I had something to tell you. I was uh, about you driving to work. St. Mary's between Ashby and uh, Dewey, they painted oh, the yellow line. Progress. And the left-hand turn lane and all that. It's like, See the light at the end of the tunnel? Yes. Shock of all shocks. Yeah. Wow. After okay. how many decades? Feels like a year. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so, I'm sorry, year. So, hey, Ruby Thornton, I mean, it's rare to see a picture of a hummingbird just lighting like that instead of flying around. Great shot, though. Yeah, taking a break from all that heat out there. It's not as bad in the afternoon. Well, we still got up to 104 yesterday, uh, but the humidity was slightly lower, and that will continue to be the trend. We do have some clouds hanging around here this morning, and temperatures, we will drop down to uh, 76 when it's all said and done, with a couple of clouds hanging around here, and then more sunshine, obviously. We make it up into the uh, low 90s already at noon, and we're going to top off at 102 today. Still well above normal, obviously, by almost 10 degrees, not as high as yesterday's 104, but it will feel like 104, not the extreme high heat index readings, at least here in town. That's why there's not the heat advisory posted here in town. We're not right at that criteria. Obviously, it's still going to be very hot out there, but just a little more tolerable in the afternoon, especially if you're in the shade. All right, let's jump ahead to the weekend. A couple of clouds hanging around here. We'll have some morning clouds around and maybe one or two of them still sticking around throughout a chunk of the day on Saturday. Then Sunday. Now this is again, those long range models tend to take a broad brush and just, you know, paint it in here. But what we can take away from this is the, the chance for some rain out there during the day on Sunday, maybe one or two of them again, primarily out to the west over there in the mountains of Mexico up in the uh, Edwards Plateau. But just, you know, at least the atmosphere is now opening up somewhat that high is getting on out of here. So that's why then again on Monday we have a chance for a couple of showers, a couple of showers around on Tuesday, and that will at least stick around into Wednesday. So again, it's because this high, which has been sitting right on top of us right now, last week it was down to the southwest. We had that that flow coming around the top of it, but now this thing is continuing to work its way off to the east. We get the atmosphere to mix a little bit more in the afternoons. That's why the humidity drops down somewhat. And then as this thing continues to get on out of here, it at least opens up the door, allows the chance for a shower or two to pop up. We don't have that tight lid on things around here. Little disturbances may slide in and slightly lower temperatures as well. So again, finally, the unwelcome house guest or the one that's overstayed its welcome is getting on out of here. 102 today. 103 or excuse me 103 is the record today but then 100s the next few days so down a couple of degrees we were talking about this earlier in the week you know little tiny steps here 99 on sunday 97s monday and tuesday i think a couple of extra clouds around a shower or two one or two stray ones here and there but boy it'll be nice to see at least a rain chance and temperatures somewhat closer to where they should be here here yep. yeah that'd be wonderful thank you mike Right now, 522, 76 degrees. Up next, why 300 more Hollywood actors sign a letter saying they're ready to strike. Plus, Futurama returns after a 10-year hiatus. More people could soon be joining Hollywood picket lines. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. We are SAG after strong and solidarity with the WGA. Yeah. That solidarity may soon lead to striking together. More than 300 sag after members have signed a letter obtained by Rolling Stone saying they'd rather go on strike than compromise on important issues. Among those who signed the letter, Meryl Streep, Jennifer Lawrence, Rami Malek, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, Ben Stiller, and Amy Poehler. sag afters contract with the studios expires Friday. The Writers Guild has been on strike since May 2nd. We seem to have survived a massive disruption in the all of time. Wait, what exactly happened? Here, look at this. After a mere 10 year hiatus, Futurama is back. The award winning animated series returns for more adventures with Fry, Leela, Bender, and the gang when season 11 of Futurama premieres July 24th on Hulu. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 526, still 76 degrees. Big air travel troubles are already brewing ahead of the upcoming July 4th holiday weekend. 
Up next, what's causing all the delays and which passengers are being affected the most? Patients at Methodist Children's Hospital got some very special visitors. You'll want to stick around and watch these heartfelt moments. With all the things we have to deal with every day, it's almost impossible to avoid getting stressed. Women are especially feeling the pressure. We're coming up on GMSA. Ladies, we're talking to you with some ways to avoid burnout. This morning, severe weather and staffing concerns are causing major travel problems for millions of Americans. Online, kids that were crying, sleeping on the floor. Uh, old people too, sleeping on the floor. Just ahead, what these problems mean for the busy upcoming 4th of July holiday weekend here in the U.S. And looking out there with a live cam, if you haven't stepped outside yet, well, you know, it's not as bad as it was yesterday morning. So encouraging news from Mike right now. Well, we jump <laughs> right into our Wednesday. It is June 28th. Thanks for joining us. We hope you survived the heat so far, and we are looking forward to things changing, I think, all of us. Yeah, yeah we're starting to see little tiny changes here. We've been talking about how it's going to be small steps. Uh, yesterday, it was still 104 like the previous day, but we did have slightly lower humidity in the afternoon. Bit more tolerable. It is a bit more tolerable this morning as well. We've got our morning clouds hanging around here as of right now. Temperature stands at 77 degrees. Dew points at 72, which it's still high, but it is lower by a couple of notches compared to yesterday. It doesn't seem like a lot, but yeah, that does make uh, a lot of difference. It, it more comfortable like stuff was talking about when you step outside. Slight bit of a heat index, but it's only one degree above the actual air temperature. So again, it's not just, you know, three, four, five degrees above the air temperature like we have seen in roughly the past week. Now, later on today, there are heat advisories posted. It's still going to be hot where the heat advisory is not posted, but it's just not up to that, you know, that threshold number right there. So that's the situation here in uh, in Bear County, as well as up in Kamal County, up towards San Marcos. Obviously, you still want to take it easy outside. Lots of water, lots of shade, if at all possible. But at least with the slightly lower humidity, it's going to be a bit more comfortable in the shade later on today. So that's one benefit. We are going to be up in the low 90s at noon. 102 high temperature. Records 103, so it is going to be close to it again. We'll have, again, slightly lower humidity, so it's not going to be outrageously hot out there. And temperatures, again, will continue to drop down a couple of more notches here and there. And believe it or not, later on in the forecast, yes, we do have the mention of at least a couple of showers here and there. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. And a closer look at July 4th, by the way, as well. Well, traffic authority, any problems on the roads now? Not yet, Mike. Uh, I think things are still in the clear for drivers that are heading the roads in the next few minutes or so. Quick look around town. There's 90 at military. Yeah, you can see the east and westbound lanes are pretty quiet, and it would be a great time to take advantage of some of the roadways that we're seeing. Over here at 90 at Nogalitos, a little bit closer into town, we see a little bit more traffic. And 410 at Jackson Keller, look like we had a lot going on out there, but not seen any reports that would be alarming for drivers this early in the morning. Just maybe a little bit more crowded in some of these spots. But we take you to our map and thankfully again, lots of green on the screen. Plenty of construction as always expected here in the Alamo City. Travel times look to be pretty good right now. That journey from Bernie along I-10 eastbound should be about a 26 minute commute. It's 26 minutes as well along 281 southbound. If you're heading in from Bolverde and along I-35 southbound, expect about a 27 minute drive time if you're heading in from New Braunfels. But one last look around town. There's 37 at Jones Avenue. Our morning is off to a good start. We'll continue to watch the roads closely and I'll have more updates coming up a little bit later on. Mark, stuff. New this morning, pilots from the 60th Flying Training Squadron, Joint Base San Antonio Randolph, took time to visit with patients at Methodist Children's Hospital. Our Sarah Costa joins us live in the studio with all the details. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Steph. Good morning, Mark. Let's talk about a heartfelt story. This special trip happened Tuesday afternoon. The pilot's community-based program was first launched in 1994, making its visit to the hospital its 100th visit. So during their visit, pilots taught patients the basics of flying and their mission. They gave children a glimpse into the world of flying with the use of helmets and other gear, along with virtual reality flight simulation goggles. The pilots also made paper airplanes with patients and participated in other fun activities and handed out patches and stickers. And lastly, pilots joined in some celebratory traditions as one patient rang the bell to recognize his last inpatient chemo. You can read more about this story and watch those videos on our website, just head to ksat.com. Mark, Steph. 
Well, this morning, severe weather causing travel headaches for much of the U.S. East Coast. Thousands of flights were delayed or canceled this week, and the Federal Aviation Administration has placed weather restrictions on airports from Washington, D.C. to Boston. And as CNN's John Lawrence reports, these problems come as many Americans are preparing to travel for the July 4th holiday. Really no sleep. Um, it's certainly been a test of patience, uh, frustrating in many ways. Getting from point A to point B hasn't been easy for many travelers over the past few days. Long line, kids that were crying, sleeping on the floor. Uh, old people too, sleeping on the floor. Since Saturday, airlines canceled more than 6,000 U.S. flights with roughly 32,000 delays. So I'm traveling to Maine for a work trip and unfortunately every flight just there has been delayed. I don't even have my luggage. It's been over two days and I still haven't even seen Maine. You know what I mean? And I was supposed to leave on Saturday. The problem started over the weekend when major thunderstorms forced many airports to keep their planes grounded and passengers stranded miles away from their desired destinations. There was a United agent standing there and we asked if we could have a cot and he said he ran out. He said they've used all 3,000 of them and so they didn't have any more. But he actually ended up going to his office and getting his emergency cot and brought it out for my daughter and I. And things could get more tense soon. With the July 4th holiday approaching, AAA forecasts nearly 4.2 million travelers plan on flying. I'm John Lawrence reporting. The late Chadwick Boseman among those in Hollywood who will be honored on the Walk of Fame this year. The class of 2024 for the Hollywood Walk of Fame was unveiled Monday. It stars Gal Gadot, Chris Pine, Christina Ricci, Michelle Yeoh, Gwen Stefani, and Dr. Dre will also be honored next year. The Walk of Fame Selection Committee make up, made up of fellow Walk of Famers. They handpick a group of honorees from across the entertainment world each year. Time now, it's 536 and 76 degrees for now. Getting around the Las Vegas Strip just got more interesting. We'll show you a special taxi that does not have a steering wheel or pedals. And Wimby Mania continues for us here on GMSA. Just ahead, how the Spurs star compares to some of the other top players. And he also has us craving some breakfast tacos this morning. Not surprised. Outside with Live Jam as we kick off your midweek day. Beautiful look at the downtown skyline, including the Alamo Dome on the right side, Frost Tower on the left. We'll be right back after this break. And welcome back. It's 540. The excitement over new Spurs star Wendy continues this morning. And Spurs officials say his arrival has led to a massive spike in interest for season tickets, of course. No surprise, right? We're told the organization has received roughly 4,000 new season ticket deposits just in May 16th. 51% of those deposits are from millennial and Gen Z fans. Here's KSET's intern Ali Hoy with a couple of unique Wimby facts you may not know about him. Let's talk about two things that are easy to love, basketball and breakfast tacos. And new Spurs star Victor Wembanyama is bringing them both together. Wemby says he is seven foot three, but if you think that's tall, he's just one of many to follow in the footsteps of other big stars. Starting with Jorge Mortesan and Manute Bull at seven foot seven, just an inch shorter, there's Sean Bradley and Yao Ming at seven six, followed by Chuck Nevitt at 7'5", and four players at 7'4", including former Spur Boban Marjanovic. And his height is not the only thing that has people excited about him. He also has the abilities and athleticism of a much smaller guard, making him something the NBA has never seen before. And as we get pumped for the upcoming Spurs season, Wemby also reminds us of the simple things in life, like breakfast tacos, and rightfully so. Our David Elder puts together a list of the top breakfast taco spots here in SA, Bernie, and New Braunfels. You're sure to find the perfect spot. Right now, you can read more about both these stories on our website. Just head to ksat.com. For GMSA, I'm Ali Hoy. All right, now you've met them both. Allison and Allie, our KSAT summer interns. Yeah, welcome. And what an awesome story to report on. Wimby, right? That's right? fun. <laughs> welcome. Time now, 542, 76 degrees for now. Up next, Animal Defense League is here with a special friend that needs a new home.
Well, it's going to be fun to see how Lucy can hang on to this little kitty because it wants yes. to get loose here. It does. So it here does. He wants to San explore. <laughs> Who's this little guy? This is little Dale. He's a cute little baby looking for his forever home. And three months old. He's one of three. He's got a brother yes. and a sister, and he's the uh, <laughs> he's the rambunctious one. So we he will is. hurry up. Yes, yes, oh, yes, you're, yes. You're okay. And <laughs> obviously, he takes a lot of hands on, and especially when they're little. Yes. And that's what you're hoping for is foster. Yes. Right? And we also this weekend we have our Sosie and Sasha's adoption special. Mm -hmm. So all of our kittens and adult cats have their adoption fees waived. Oh wow. Yes. So June thirtieth, July first and second, come see us. Um, um, from noon to seven, and hopefully you can add a new furry friend to your family. Okay, and like I said, he's got his his siblings with him, and two cats are basically, or in this case, three, the same as one. They, yeah. You know, they kind of get along together, really don't make that much that much difference. Yes. And uh, are, you, are you just a little feisty? Guy? Oh my so, goodness, see? Okay. <laughs> Well, before he jumps down and runs away, uh, head on over if you'd like to help out fostering or volunteering opportunities. And don't forget about the adoption fees raised for cats and kittens this weekend. 40 to 4 Fredericksburg Road. I told you it's going to be fun watching her try to wrangle that thing. 226 7461. Thank you. How cute. In your morning consumer headlines, as Ford shifts to producing more electric vehicles, the automaker expects to lay off a number of workers in North America over the coming days. The company has previously said it's also hiring in some areas, so it's not clear if the layoffs will result in an overall reduction in its workforce. Ford executives said in March that the company will lose $3 billion this year on sales of electric vehicles, but they still expect to meet its profit targets of $9 to $11 billion for the year. There's a new way to cruise the Las Vegas Strip. No driver required. A company called Zook says it's RoboTaxi is now operating in Sin City. Zook says service started Friday, making it the first time a fully driverless, purpose-built RoboTaxi has hit public roads in Nevada. The vehicle does not have a steering wheel or pedals. The company had to complete rigorous testing and get authorization from the Department of Motor Vehicles in Nevada before it could begin operations. It looks just like the thing from the movie Fifth Element. Remember? <gasps> I'm your, your yes. little, the, and the tax, the robot taxi driver. You're right. Yeah. I love that movie, by the way. I, I love the movie too. I'm just trying to remember that vehicle. With towards Bruce Willis the, when he jumped in there, right? In the beginning. Yes. Towards, okay. And I get your credits. Yeah. Right? Well, in right? the beginning what as was well. That? What the, what the guy say? We're going to look it up. Okay, we'll, we'll look it up. Look it. We're, we're going to find out here. Uh, not huh? spotting any wireless taxi cabs out there on the roadways, at least at this point in time. Let's get a quick look around town. There's 410 at Ingram North, and you can see 410 at McCullough. Things have just been moving fine in my department here. Uh, watch out, though. There is a stall vehicle reported along 410 eastbound at Perrin Vital, not causing an issue for drivers, but be on the lookout for that. And be on the lookout for this barrier installation that has been current. Uh, should wrap up tomorrow, but the work begins pretty early at 7 in the morning. Should wrap at 7 in the evening, according to Tech Stop. Alternating lane closures in both directions from State Highway 211 to County Road 485. Head over to KSAT.com slash traffic. There's a whole bunch happening in and around our city, but just, uh, yeah, watch out here on the roadways. It's going to get a little bit busier as we get closer to morning rush and uh, not spotting again any of those wireless taxi cabs, but yeah. did you guys figure it out? Or yes. Did, Jamie, 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 our director. Thank you. <laughs> Jamie. Total recall. Okay. Total, with John, Arnold Schwarzenegger? Yeah. Johnny, yeah, Johnny Cab? Johnny. Johnny Cab. Johnny yeah, that Cap. was it. That makes so. sense. Yes. Uh, but wait, it wasn't it also in the Fifth Element? It looks familiar to something. Well, the, the cab would familiar? talk to him. Uh, I just remember the blue squid girl who was an opera singer. <laughs> yes. The squid yes. woman. Very memorable moment. Yes. yes. How did we go from cabs to opera singer? I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, beautiful view. I love this. Everybody's flowers are in bloom. A plumeria. Oh. Ever heard of it? That looks like almost like the flowers we were showing the it other does. day. Yes. Yeah. yes. That's absolutely gorgeous. Thank you very much. Hopefully, Mother Nature is going to be providing a little bit of watering for some of those flowers. Got to wait a few days still. Got to put up with today once again. Got uh, some morning clouds hanging out there. Traffic over there, 10, 410 is moving along very well. 77 at the airport, 75 at Divine. Hello to 76, 77 at New Braunfels. So we are still slightly above normal. Normal low is 74 closer to where we should be and actually temperatures are maybe down a degree or two compared to this time yesterday as is the humidity just ever so that much lower 104 yesterday 109 Carrizo Springs Catula hit 113 
set another record in Del Rio again today. Shave off a degree or two here and there around the area. Some low hundreds, a couple of more. Yeah, some folks may not make it quite up to 100 in your backyard, but yeah, it's still going to be very hot. And heat index 105 here in town, 100 even upper 90s in parts of the hill country, higher down here to the southeast. And that's why the heat advisory is posted for our southeastern counties, not San Antonio out in the hill country. Still, obviously, it's going to be very hot. Nothing really showing up in the satellite picture right now. These low clouds uh, don't show up too awfully well this time of the morning. Um, on the bigger picture, obviously not much out there, but you got to kind of take into account this clockwise rotation all the way up underneath that banner. That's the high that's been sitting on top of us. That is now going to start to work its way off to the east a little bit more. It has already sort of begun. We're starting to see a couple of different changes. First of all, not as high a temperature. We stay down a couple of degrees. Also, the humidity will tend to be lower in the afternoon. We get into that cycle where it can, as we say, mix out a little bit more and mixes with the, the atmosphere upstairs. And so that's why the humidity drops down somewhat in the afternoon. So that will be slightly more comfortable. Big storm off there. It's been causing all those travel delays and another one coming through the Great Lakes as well. Here's long range computer model very quickly and a couple of clouds. Yeah, we're jumping ahead to the weekend here, but then with that high sliding off to the east, at least it opens up the door for the opportunity for a stray shower or two here or there. Not great chances, not anything written in stone, but at least there's going to be that uh, small chance. And I think actually I'm going to put a 10% shot in there on Sunday and then Monday, Tuesday. 20% chance for a stray shower or two and temperatures with that high, not just like sitting on top of us like a weight that's easing. So therefore, it's not going to be quite as uh, hot going into the next few days. Upper 90s, mid to upper 90s by the first of the week. Nice. We can remove that weighted blanket or yeah. Mother Nature can. It, it is kind of like a weighted blanket. That's yes. good. Good description. Thanks, Mike. 552, 76 degrees. Not many film franchises last more than four decades. And with the same leading man, well, then again, there aren't many like Harrison Ford. Up next, we look at the Indiana Jones franchise and its latest chapter. Coming up here on GMA, the travel chaos continues. And now we're going into the big holiday weekend with so many people flying. What are we going to see? So more cancellations or delays? I'll definitely have the forecast and we'll get into the story of getting through the airports. Also, a warning about dangerous rip currents after an alarming number of drownings in Florida. Officials there are sounding the alarm and they really need you to know some tips before you head to the beach. And finally, I'm here in Tulare Lake. This is in California's Central Valley, a lake that was originally here, but in the late 1800s, we diverted all the water away and made it farmland, some of the most profitable farmland in our nation. And now it's underwater. So we'll talk about what the losses are and how they might just impact you coming up right here on GMA. I'm retiring. Well, in that case, what are we drinking? More than four decades after he first donned that fedora, Harrison Ford returns in Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. They take into account that he's an older guy, a wearier guy, uh, someone who's been through it all, and they do put, show, put show some of the action load onto Phoebe Waller-Bridge, who I thought was a real pleasant surprise. You've taken your chances, made your mistakes. A final triumph. CNN media critic Brian Lowry says Dial of Destiny recaptures some of the magic last seen in 1989's Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. The third movie really was a very lovely cap to the original trilogy and revisiting it with uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull was questionable to begin with and then the movie itself didn't deliver particularly well. What's he gonna do now? I don't think he plans that far ahead. The problem now is that no intellectual property is going to be left unturned. And once they were able to, to get Harrison Ford to come back and do another one, I think, you know, it, it was probably hard for them to resist the temptation to do it one more time. It's called capitalism. Of course, fans who were in their 20s for the first film are in their 60s now. The audience that saw in Raiders of the Lost Ark in theaters are generally not the demographic that rushes out to see things opening weekend. It's not so much what you believe. It's how hard 
you believe it. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Right now, 557, still ahead the next hour of GMSA, the summer heat putting pressure on our state's power grid. How ERCOT is handling it so far coming up. Plus, women across the country say they're feeling the pressure and are more burnt out than usual. Sarah Costa tells you how to keep yourself from burning out in a healthy way. And checking Transguide, a few flashing lights right there at 10 and ProBant. And there's I-35 at 410. We'll be back.